How easily can you be Elden Ring as Rodigan? Rodigan is one of the most influential figures in Elden Ring. In fact, he pretty much is the Elden Ring. And in this video, I'll be taking control of him and using him to fight some of the game's most difficult bosses. The rules of this challenge are simple. We play on max new game difficulty and this video will not end until we've defeated Melania. Before we begin, I've already finished recording the footage for these two videos, so let me know which boss you guys want to see first by leaving a comment below. And don't forget to like the video because YouTube doesn't always recommend. All right, I'm actually super excited for this run. I think the last time I played as a final boss was when I beat Dark Souls 3 as the Soul of Cinder. Even though we're practically falling apart, Rodigan has a lot of HP. It's gonna take a warship to bring us down. This video is sponsored by World of Warships, a very popular free-to-play game available on PC, mobile, and PlayStation. World of Warships features hundreds of different ships to choose from and even more positive reviews. With a focus on realistic naval warfare, the game's stunning visuals and dynamic weather system make for a highly immersive experience. For this month only, there is a brand new update which lets you choose Vic Rattlehead or Dave Mustaine as your ship's commander, and with Megadeth-themed patches, flags, and skins, you really feel like an actual member of the band. The developers in this game are extremely active and the community is very passionate. This game is updated every single month and whether it's new ships, classes, or cosmetics, there is always something to do. If you're interested in trying it out for yourself, then you can use the code MEGADETH in the link below to receive a huge starter pack, including 200 doubloons, 500,000 credits, 7 days premium account time, and a brand new ship. Thanks again to World of Warships for sponsoring this video. Did you know that Elden Ring players have started over 280 million boss fights with Margit? That's insane. I remember my first boss fight with Margit. Goodbye, Margit! Wait, he's still alive? This club is trash! Why did I level it up? Fortunately, Rodigan's hammer is not trash and Margit is easily brought to his knees. This fight marked the beginning of a very conflicted run, especially from a lore standpoint. Margate has always been loyal to the Golden Order, so it actually kind of hurt to put him down. Same couldn't be said for Godric though. Yeah, I'm gonna enjoy this one. This fight is always experimental. When I did this challenge last time as Morgoth, I had the privilege of using his speed to avoid Godric's attacks. And while Rodigan is on the slower side, he's actually just as mobile. In phase two, I'm able to jump over his flamethrower completely and even squeeze in a few attacks while I'm at it. Between that, our teleport, and the traps we can leave on the ground, I think it's pretty clear who's the real lord of all that is golden. After putting down the family dog, next up was our ex-wife. For those who don't know, Rodigan and Renala have a checkered past. It's pretty widely understood that her influence is actually what led to Rodigan learning sorcery in the first place, and there's even a giant statue of him T-posing in the back of her arena. It doesn't really have much to do with the fight, but it's a nice touch. Renala's low poise makes her an easy target, and Rodigan tears through it like a wet paper towel. In phase two, normally this moon attack would be a problem, but this is the first time we get to see Rodigan's teleport on full display. And it's amazing. This is probably the most broken move I have ever showcased in one of these runs. And it's a nice change of pace, especially after that Morgoth playthrough. After getting our own poise broken, one more attack brings her down, and now it's time to pay a visit to our son. While I teleport over to Radon, you guys need to know that I just launched my first official plushie with Makeship, and if you want to pick one up for yourself, you can use the link below. Alright, where was I? Rodigan is a lot smaller than most bosses. While this might seem underwhelming in a final boss fight, for the sake of this run, it's actually a blessing in disguise. Oh wow, I actually dodged that. Thanks to the giant blind spot right in front of Radon, Rodigan is able to avoid most of his attacks and once he's finally had enough, he takes to the skies. Avoiding the meteor leaves Radon completely exposed and that's when he takes a few lightning spears to the face. Despite our differences in size, Rodigan does have more HP than Radon, but not by much. And after a bit of back and forth, the general falls without much of a fight. The Draconic Tree Sentinel is everything Rodigan hates. Not only is he capable of strike and fire damage, which are both huge weaknesses for Rodigan, but he also has better defenses overall. While I didn't necessarily struggle with this fight, I can safely say that I'm glad that we won't have to deal with any more fire damage in this run. Right? There's no 
more fire now. Morgoth's Illusion is a fantastic warm up for the Poise Olympics, also known as the Godfrey fight. In this one, I discovered a cut content move, which I did use to avoid one of Goldfree's attacks, but the teleport is obviously better. After showering Goldfree in, well, in gold, I made my way over to the throne for an exchange with Morgoth. Versus Morgoth, I did my best stepdad impression and dished out the abuse. Aside from their family ties, Morgoth and Rodigan are very similar. Both have spears, traps, and projectiles they can use to keep opponents at bay, and each of their movement options lets them close the distance in the blink of an eye. Unfortunately for Morgoth though, I am a god, so holy damage isn't very effective, rendering most of his arsenal completely useless. It's time we finally address the elephant in the room. Rodigan is Merica. If you're familiar with the game's lore, then you'll know that Merica hated the giants because, well, she thought they might burn down the Erd Tree. This would explain why Rodigan is so weak against fire, and it also explains why this fight was so damn difficult. Between his massive poise, physical damage, and fire attacks, the fire giant has Rodigan sweating, especially on max new game difficulty. Aside from focusing on his legs, teleport spam is enough to get us through phase 1, but phase 2's fire pillars were extremely painful. Once we're in phase 2 ourselves, the giant finally rolls away and this final exchange was a nail biter. The close calls didn't stop there though, and if you've ever seen one of these runs before, then you know how bad these two can be. Between the percentage based fire damage, the 2v1 in our tiny arena, even as the final boss, the odds are not in our favor. One of the biggest strengths that Rodigan has in this fight is his extremely potent area of effect damage, and even his teleports seem to have splash damage. All of this combined makes the duo that much easier to handle, and after taking down the noble, the apostle tries to finish me off, but a clutch jump leaves is just out of range. With only two hits left on my health bar, I start praying to myself, and that's when this happened. Holy shit. Alright. That's enough Elden Ring for today. This fight is a contender for one of the best in the entire run, and the reason why is because of this discovery. Offensive teleports. This entire time I was so focused on using teleports to avoid damage, but because of the splash damage, we can use them offensively as well. I've said this before, but at this point, it feels like I'm playing an entirely different game. Perfectly timed teleports while jumping over attacks with the holy stake make for a very cinematic experience, and the picture perfect finish was just. DiGiorno. When I finally made it to Gideon, I think he was sick or something because he sounded a lot different. What a sad state of affairs. I commend your spirit, but alas, none shall take the throne. Regardless, you already know I had to grab this guy because he's one of the only bosses who can be grabbed without mods. Once he gets back up, he tries to go for a Kamehameha, but little does he know I'm the only Super Saiyan in this arena. Godfrey was a masterclass in teleportation. Not only did it reliably avoid the poise shredding properties of his axe, but it also completely got around the shockwaves, which was groundbreaking. Much like the Morgoth fight, the dimensions start tearing in two, and I'm still not entirely sure why this happens. After perfectly avoiding Horalu's Earthshaker, he makes a huge mistake by going for a grab, thus solidifying my role as the superior Elden Lord. Versus myself, we open up with the same attack, and lucky for us, my AI is much faster than his. Because we're both extremely resistant to Holy, the winner of this fight was determined by whoever could land the most hammer attacks, and that goes double for the Elden Beast, which was more of an Elden Feast. Rodigan's daughter, Melania, is easily the most difficult boss of this entire run, and my whole strategy going into this fight was to hit and run. Rodigan has many attacks that can easily knock Melania over, but while she's on the ground, she's unable to be hit by any of my favorite follow-ups. The real test in this fight is just how well Rodigan can deal with waterfowl, and I have to say, I was completely blown away. With perfect timing, Rodigan can actually avoid every single hit. We weren't out of the woods yet though, and over the course of this fight we start to take way too much damage, and I'm forced to enter phase 2. In this phase, Melania has a hard time dealing with our flying attacks, and eventually she's brought into phase 2 herself. When I go for my signature move, Melania responds, and I'm forced to end the attack early. After dodging Scarlet Eonia, I fly a little too close to the sun and take a ton of damage as a result. 
with the last bit of strength in my health bar. That was, that was an intense fight. And with that guys, I do have a confession to make. If you're wondering where I've been for the last month, I've actually been on vacation traveling in Europe. I got to meet up in Paris with the winner of my very first challenge from the video that put my channel in all of your recommended feeds and it was a lot of fun. Jordan? Jordan. Maybe. <laughs> That's you, dude. <laughs> I also visited Barcelona, Spain, where I got to see this huge structure called La Sagrada Familia, which puts San Orlando to shame, and I ate so much good food. I even learned how to cook some of it at this cooking class. My next video will be the treasure hunt out in October. And if you want to help support the channel, then please don't forget to pick up a plushie as the campaign is only active for 21 more days, and then it's gone forever.